this is the ask and answer, the dueling bots. We've got asking the questions, you know, in the one corner, we got our champion, you know, returning champion. That's the Slim QGen Phi 3 tool. That's gonna to be producing the questions. In our other corner, the challenger, we've got answering the questions. We've got our Bling Stable LM 3B tool. So two different models here. And then what we have over on the left is just a simple navigation. So you can start to use this. Feed into, I sort of throw it into the middle of the pit, a passage. First model then is gonna create a question. The second model then is gonna to try to answer it. But overall, pretty good here. Our bots are having a pretty nice discussion here, back and forth, asking interesting questions and answering them you know, based on the passage that they've seen. Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Usually when we think about how to use an LLM, it's to answer a question. But there are a whole bunch of use cases actually where LLMs can be very useful to generate a question based on a context passage. And this tends to come up in at least three distinct use cases. The first, and it's, it's a huge one, is for education, enablement, testing, training, for teachers with students. There's a whole need to generate questions off a set of materials and using the ability of an LLM to understand the context and generate a question in a consistent and programmatic way that's sensible based on that context is one use case that we see a lot of, can you actually get an LLM to generate questions for me? Second use case is all around retrieval and tagging strategies in that oftentimes when you think about how do you really create a very effective strategy of identifying the semantic meaning of a particular passage, Understanding common questions or representative questions and tagging in some way those questions to that content can definitely help with retrieval strategies, both text retrieval as well as semantic retrieval. And then the third case, the one that's actually the most fun, it's actually what we're gonna show you. So you should stay tuned. We're gonna show you some really, really cool stuff is um, agent-oriented scenarios where we really start thinking about almost dueling agents or maybe they're cooperating with each other. Maybe that's like a nicer way to think about it. But where in effect, one agent can generate the question, the other agent then can answer that. And so there's all this work that's going on. I think a lot of excitement around how we can bring together agents interacting with each other in some kind of autonomous or semi-autonomous way. And that actually led us to the dueling Q&A chatbot that we're gonna show you a little bit later. And it's a chatbot unlike anything else that you've seen because the user just sits back while two different bots, one raises a question and then the other answers the question. And so you see a whole chat scroll uh, we're gonna show you, except you as the user, all you have to do is say go and the bots pick it up from there. So that's what we're gonna actually show you. But at the core of this, some new models that we've developed, we've added them into the LLM or catalog. They're slim models. And it's really four models that we've created. We've created a tiny llama version and a Phi 3 version. So one is around a billion parameters. The other is 3.8 billion parameters. To be honest, we haven't seen that much of a difference between one and 3.8 billion parameters in terms of question generation, probably a little bit more varied, a little bit more interesting um, in terms of what you're gonna get from the Phi 3. And then as always, we've packaged it in two different ways, both as the traditional PyTorch model, and then the model that we're actually gonna be using here is the GGUF four-bit quantized version, because again, we find it tends to run a lot faster locally. So a bunch of question generation models. And the way that these models work is they've been fine-tuned to do this one specialized function call. You feed it passage, you feed it a parameter, and the parameter is the type of question that you're looking for. And there are three types that are supported. A general question, just question. Boolean, yes, no questions and then multiple choice, and it'll generate multiple choice questions. But all you have to do is pass the passage, you pass the parameter of what type of question you're looking for, the model then outputs a Python dictionary with the key question, and then in a list, it has the question that it's generated. So very, very easy to pick up and handle programmatically. Again, we'll show you that in the context of these two agents going back and forth, asking and answering each other's questions. So what we wanted to do first is just show you how the model works. We'll run through this really quickly and then we'll flip over and we'll show you the chatbot. So this is a hello world, easy to pull down the model. As with all models in LLM where you load the model first time you do that, it is going to be cached locally, and then every successive time after that, it's gonna run faster. The model will run entirely you know, on your machine. Part of what you wanna do is to create that interactive experience. And so this is a, one case where we find turning on sampling and increasing the temperature 
is going to be important to give you a more varied set of questions, especially if within a particular passage, you are looking to generate five or 10 or you know a wide range of questions. There definitely will be some repetitive questions. And so what we've done here, you'll, you'll see just a simple loop that basically dedupes and removes some of the identical questions, but you'll see even in some cases, some of the questions are gonna be pretty similar to each other. So again, one of the things to think about in working with a model like this is how do you get the right varied set of responses? What we found is this is a case where turning up the temperature and different sampling strategies can definitely give you a more interesting and varied output. So we're gonna run through a simple hello world just so you can see the model in action, see the kind of output that we get. We're gonna generate the question with one model, and then we're gonna pull in our answer model. And the answer model is going to take the same context passage. It's going to take the question from the other model, and then it's going to generate the answer to it. So let's go ahead and let's let's run this so that everybody can see how the model works. Okay, here we go. So we fed it a passage on OpenAI. I'm actually going to show it to you when I open up the chat bot. Uh, but you can see we generate, you know, 10 different questions, 10 interesting, relevant questions that can be handled programmatically. We deduped them then. And so after we ran through all of them, we filtered it down to eight unique questions. Again, you could run others type of rules-based filters if you wanted to narrow that list even further. Got uh, eight nice questions out of it. Now we're uh, generating um, some questions again. And you'll see in just a second, once we have all the questions, here we go, our ask question, what is the name of the executive who resigned? And you see the response question and then another model answering the question. So I'm gonna flip over, I'm gonna show it to you. You can probably guess now this is a passage about OpenAI recently announced a safety and security committee. So this was a passage, all the questions were generated from that and then all of the answers are coming in response to those questions. All right, so hopefully this makes sense. Again, the example is in the repository, but let's flip over to the more fun part, which is a dueling Jeopardy bot, two bots. They're not gonna leave us with much to do. So here we go. So this is the ask and answer, the dueling bots. We've got asking the questions, you know, in the one corner, we got our champion, you know, returning champion. That's the slim QGen 5.3 tool. That's gonna to be producing the questions. In our other corner, the challenger, we've got answering the questions. We've got our bling stable LM 3B tool. So two different models here. And then what we have over on the left is just a simple navigation so you can start to use this. Feed into, I sort of throw it into the middle of the pit, a passage. First model then is gonna create a question. The second model then is gonna to try to answer it. So this was the example that we just showed on the command line, simple background paragraph on OpenAI. We included here, just for fun, a few other examples, mix of some different topics. Let's say you pick the Apple sample passage this is the passage that will be used then to generate the question. And what we can do, as we said, is you, you have different modes. So we've seen a general question. Let's actually try Boolean or multiple choice just so you can see what that actually does. So basic questions first, and then I'll come back and I'll show you that. All right, so now here we are. We're, we're used to chatbot, we're used to being in control. But here on our user prompt line, all it says is say go because the bots are gonna be doing all of the discussion for us. So we're just gonna say go. One bot asks the question, other bot answers. You can confirm it then on the passage on the left. We have turned up the temperature and sampling. And so you will see, we've done that to try to generate some more interesting and varied answers. We found the accuracy is probably in the 80 to 90% range. As I said, the other proviso is you will see some repetitiveness in the questions, but overall pretty good here. Our bots are having a pretty nice discussion here back and forth, asking interesting questions and answering them, you know, based on the passage that they've seen. So let's go look at a different one. I don't know how many of you are basketball fans. This was a passage recently about the Los Angeles Lakers and a coaching issue that they had. Let's look at Boolean questions. These are yes, no questions. Let's say go. And so here you go. The questions are coming in. These are all yes, no questions. The models are giving, for the most part, yes and no answers. It's a pretty nice way to start controlling the behavior of this. Sometimes, you know, when you are looking for test generation or you're looking for something that can be enriching, you know, a data set in some way, there's a particular kind of question that you want. And so we built these three features into the model. General question is gonna have a pretty wide range and mix, you know, lots of what's and why's and how's some summary type questions. Boolean are all gonna come back pretty consistently. 
yes and no. And then I'm gonna show you the multiple choice in just a second. All right, let's look at another example. We'll look Taylor Swift. This was again, a story we just picked out of the news recently. A fan was having some issue in her concert. Taylor Swift really did some nice things for that fan. So now let's look at some multiple choice questions. And again, we're just saying go, we're not doing anything else. The bots are talking to each other. And so here we go. We're getting some multiple choice. A couple of these are not. So a lot of that is because the temperature is turned up. So a couple of times we didn't see the multiple choice that we were looking for, but here we go. Most of the questions are coming up pretty nice. It is kind of funny that the model created a question in which it's none of the above, but you can see pretty decent, you know, fact-based question generation and answering. You can set how many you're looking to have. If you want a really long dialogue or a short dialogue. Now, what we've put together here is a pretty simple framework, but some really interesting directions for this would be, what if you know, the question generating model could be adapting its questions based on the responses that it was getting? Or what if you know, we thought about creating two agents, each of which had a question and an answering capability? So almost like on a talk show, you know, one could answer a question, make a comment, and then they would ask a question back to the other. It probably evolves more into something that you'd want to do with agents, solving and perhaps collaborating on a more complex task. All right, so we hope you've had some fun with this. Check out Slim QGen model. As always, any questions or comments, please come join us on Discord. Thanks everybody. Take care and have a good day.